34 feet longer than Orville Wright's historic first flight in 1903. The E.T. is actually two tanks in one, a forward liquid oxygen tank and an aft liquid hydrogen tank, joined by the inner tank assembly. During the eight minutes the shuttle climbs into water, the external tank delivers 535,000 gallons of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen to the main engines, at a rate of over 1,000 gallons per second. The external tank is designed and assembled by Lockheed Martin Space Systems at the NASA Mission Assembly Facility in New Orleans, Louisiana. We're dealing with something that was brand spanking new at the time. And it's worked for 30 years. Nothing comparable to that has existed in the history of the human race. Well, the United States of the the shuttle program was doing all the movements. They also had an upgrade program. They also had guys that they were trying to make it better. They were going to do the tank. They went from the right wing tank to a super right wing tank. So they could make our station missions. And that's how we got the grip. The task was to reduce the empty weight of the tank. We could skinny down the structures in those areas where we didn't need as much. And we could lighten it. We had the most visible changes where we were the light paint. The first two attacks that flew in these days were in two and white paint on the front. We had them that showed that the ultraviolet damage to the surface of the plane was only a few gangsters, and so there was essentially no damage to the plane. It would eliminate some 600 pounds of paint. We've been able to go from 77,000 pounds down to 57,000 pounds and still be able to the same performance and the same structural integrity of the tank. The solid rocket boosters are composed of three major parts. A forward assembly, a solid rocket motor, and an aft skirt. When ignited, the motors reach full power in less than half a second. They generate the power of a 40 million horsepower motor, providing 80% of the shuttle's thrust during the first two minutes of flight. The solid rocket motors are assembled at ATK near Brigham City, Utah. The flight components are shipped to Florida on special rail cars. At Kennedy, the motors are integrated with the forward assembly and the aft skirt to form the flight configuration solid rocket booster. The orbiter is attached to the external tank. The two aft skirts bear the total weight of the shuttle system about four and a half million pounds. As I'm driving, some systems get the primary instructions that the whole thing will rest on. And we have turbo machinery in the transmit control system that provides the majority of steering and doing ice and of course we have an avionics that they control that as well as our separation systems. We have a suite of power techniques that are involved in all of the things that we have to do with the we also have explosive units, air separation interfaces, external tank, and power techniques are involved in the cabin systems as well. The main parachutes, the deceleration subsystem, the booster, uh, to allow us to have the wings of building, which is very unique for a solid rocket motor. Boosters and the motor had to work together flawlessly. And then they also had to support the vehicle. So there was a lot of performance that we had to work on. There was a lot of uh, technology, key elements that had to work perfectly in order for the whole vehicle to be successful. Post-flight inspection helped us understand how that motor or that vehicle performed. And it helped us understand if we needed to make a design change. So the booster itself, basically in post-flight, comes back and talks to you and tells you how it performed. I'm telling you, if you take the one first, not just here at Marshall Space 